Guys, as always, thank you for listening to the cast and all of you that joined up to Patreon. It really does mean a lot to us. So I uh, just want to let you know, I'm, I'm, I'm popping on Instagram now. I don't know where you guys are, but P. Corielli, look me up, join me, all right? Let, let me, let's have some fun. Let's dance. Also, if you haven't signed up, coming out with a new newsletter pretty soon, and uh, these things are picking up pace here. They're, they're, they're turning into a novel. So you can get all that at PeteCorielli.com. Again, thanks for listening, and now more importantly, Back to the show, baby. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, no introduction needed right now. We just need, we need right. to. There's a lot to unpack here. I, I don't even know. You know, I think we have two different yeah. opinions on where to start, wh- how we start this damn thing. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I I I, I got to for my own my own well-being I need to figure out what's going on with your well-being. Bo, as far as health and wellness goes, what I've discovered through my situation which we'll get into today over the past week, it, it, it's like chopping through a jungle. I'm riffing here. Totally chopping through a jungle with a machete and all of a sudden truly coming across the secret lost city that some people didn't think existed. And then when you get there, people you know are already there. And they're going, I couldn't tell you about it. You had to find it yourself. It's unbelievable. I mean, doctors are criminal. How my doctor's not handcuffed? How he's not handcuffed and taken out the back door? I don't even know, guy. We will get into all that. But I, I'm wanting to start on. I went to your movie premiere, okay? I don't even know where to start. First of all, you're such a great friend. You you almost made it feel like it was my movie premiere. That's I, I was I thought I'd get to chat with you for a second. I sat next to your family. I rode the van with your dad. I mean, it was just we and the movie. Everybody out there, this movie's for the whole family. It is for the whole family, and everybody's gonna laugh. From from seventy five to seven, you guys go see this movie over the holiday weekend. It's gonna rain one day over Memorial Day weekend. Hop in the car, go see all about my father. About my father, I don't know why I always had the all. De Niro, hilarious. Uh, the guy, one of the this list, the whole cast was great. It was it was such a great night, and I know you probably don't want to get into that right away because you just lived it. But I I just. First of all, I have to say, I don't know where do we start because the red carpet, I've never seen anybody work the carpet like you work the carpet. You're going to get more <laughs> movies just from the way you work the red carpet. They're like, we can't even get Brad Pitt to give a half wave. You're doing like, you know, monologues left and right, you know, asking for gum. You're like, I need a piece of gum. I'm losing sal- saliva. It was like really impressed, man. It was real. It was top level showbiz and all i want to say in 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 closing to this little opening monologue uh to the listeners as a child when you dream of what you want to do and i would imagine like sebastian dreamed of comedy and at some point i did too but you could never have dreamed to to get to the place you got to i mean it's beyond the dream and all well deserved just the the woman who plays your fiance in the movie is married which i didn't know to sam rockwell Right, so this guy Sam Rockwell sitting on a couch at your movie premiere, like then I look over Chaz Palmateri's chatting with Lana, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> you just look like, crazy, man. The people, I mean, I don't know how you don't talk to your fiance every day and say, what's Sammy doing? Was want to do a cameo? We got room for a cameo in this thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it was just so Hollywood and. Fun and awesome, and Jackie had a blast, and yes, yeah, so we can we can get into all that um, when you want to, or then we can get into what happened to me afterwards and, and what that led to. <laughs> uh, well, I have other things I want to talk about, and I, I appreciate you, you saying I, I appreciate you saying all that. It was a whirlwind of a week. It started in Chicago, my hometown, and then. Uh, and spiraled right into uh, to New York City, and it was 
a whirlwind of press that I've never really witnessed before in my career. It was, I mean, you hear about these press junkets. For God's sake, I used to work at the Four Seasons, and all those press junkets for those movies were held at the Four Seasons. But I didn't exactly know what was going on in those rooms. I did hear that basically actors, directors, what have you, sit down in a chair, and then people come in and interview you, and it's the same, basically the same question, just from a different outlet. But to actually go through it, I was like, wow. Uh, to give you, the listeners and yourself an idea of what happens, I'm sitting there with De Niro to the, to the right of me, and uh, every four minutes, a new person comes in, sits down in a chair. It's like, it's like speed dating, but for press, right? <laughs> All right, they, right. They, they come in, they ask you questions, and they leave. And then they announce, okay, Frank Johnson from People Magazine. He comes, shakes our hands, sits down, asks his question, he leaves. So that goes on for eight hours, right? Just people coming in and out. Some people get four, some people get, like, I felt bad. Like, the, the guy from Poland, right? The guy came yeah. from Poland. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, all right, uh, you know, Mike uh, Kazarinski, six minutes. Now, he he got just two extra minutes, and he came from 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 Warsaw, right? So, right. So I, I asked the guy, I go, no. I go. <laughs> and I even have to say, I go, this ain't part of his time. I'm just going to ask him a question. I don't want the clock to start on my qu- <laughs> question. Right, right. <laughs> so I said, where did you get in? He goes, I got in last night. And I go, when are you leaving? He goes, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. <laughs> this guy came all the way from from Poland for a six-minute interview. To to ask you the same thing that the guy from uh, the the Greenwich Village asked me two minutes ago, right? Now, like, so if you go, if like, if all of a sudden you talk to the guy from Poland and you go, oh, yeah, my my wife and I want to go to Warsaw, we've been thinking about, and then you get into a, you like him and you get into a conversation beyond the interview. It, does that just make everybody's heads explode? Like, bro, the assembly line, you're slowing it down. It's supposed to be a certain... What are you doing here? Well, I, I think if the actors decide that they want to engage a little bit more with the uh, people that are interviewing us, it's it's like, okay, this is just part of the game. Like, De Niro would would ask... Like, I, I could tell he kind of like who he liked. Not that he didn't like everybody, but, like, he took a... A liking to uh, uh, some people, and he'd be like, "Where are you from?" And then he would have like a conversation with them about where that you're from and and, and what have you. Uh-huh. But for the most part, it was it was churn and burn, churn and burn, in and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> All right, for Father's Day, right? They're like, "What are you cooking for Father's Day? Pizzas, pastas? No, I'm going with meat, and I'm going with Omaha. All right." And I'm gonna do it in the pizza oven. So I'm gonna do ribeyes, fillets, everything in the pizza oven, right from Omaha Steaks. It's something that uh, you know damn well I love to eat. And 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 I don't know, I, I don't know, Pete. You know, we've discussed on our podcast is is meat is meat something that we could start implementing into our diet for a better better health regimen. I know you know people say mm-hmm. it's, it causes heart disease, but does it? I don't know. No, I, it, I, I think the, I, I think yeah. the Omaha steak is the way to go. Yeah. Hey, listen. If the president can tell you you're not going to get COVID from a shot, I'm comfortable telling you <laughs> you're not going to get inflammation from <laughs> these beautiful <laughs> Omaha steaks. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? It's how you cook it. You're not going to white trash it up and put the Omaha steak in a deep fat fry it, right? You're going to do a nice grill on it so you're fine. Enjoy it. I'm right there with you. Oh God, it's always great to have Pete ad lib on these ads. Uh, you know, <laughs> they, they, uh, it could be a lawsuit coming <laughs> for Omaha Steaks. <laughs> uh, you know, Father's Day right around oh. the corner, though. 
what do you give right. to a man that's that's got everything? Well, Father Day's experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to put a smile on the big guy's face this summer with hand-selected packages. Five generations of family-owned expertise means uncompromising quality you could trust. Every steak and every entree is flash-frozen, vacuum-sealed, and ready for Dad to love whenever he's hungry. Right, Pete? Oh, without a doubt. So just head on over to omahasteaks.com and use the promo code THECAST at checkout and get $30 off your qualifying order. Packages can include fork tender, bacon wrap filet mignons, or I had that, by the way, and I was phenomenal, uh, or other gourmet grillables like the air-chilled boneless chicken breasts. Oh, that's nice and healthy. Burgers, Jumbo Franks, and many more favorites, man. And don't forget to save room for dessert. Most gift packages come with four delicious caramel apple tartlets. I'm getting hungry just talking about this. Also, uh, check out the other hand-selected packages that are guaranteed to make Dad's Day. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that dads want steak. Right? Give him what he wants. No, whether it's your father, your father-in-law, a father figure, he's the guy who's always ready to step up when you need him most. It's Father's Day. Show him the love that this man deserves. Give him only the gift that's unforgettable as he is, the mouth-watering perfection of Omaha steaks from perfectly aged and oh-so-tender steaks to hand-selected gift packages. Omaha steaks makes it easy to give Dad what he really wants. Don't get them flowers. Don't get them a gift certificate to Amazon. Steaks, baby. Order today. Get $30 off with promo code THECAST, and every purchase is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. Minimum order may be required. See site for details. <laughs> um, I want to take you, and this hasn't aired yet, and I don't know when we're airing this, but I have to tell you on this uh, on this podcast what happened to me. Um, Gail King comes in to interview my father and I in a deli in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Now, this oh, deli has a sandwich on their board named after me, right? Right. And my father had said, you know, you know this is a couple years ago. There's a deli that's got a sandwich. It's right by my salon. Did you know that? I said, no, I didn't know that they had a sandwich named after me. Anyway. We decide to do this interview there, or CBS decides to do this interview at this deli. And the interview is a surprise. Uh, the, the, the owners of the deli think that Gail King is coming in with my father, and they're doing a, uh, a review on Italian delis in Chicago with my dad. Right. Now, we previewed that, right? Didn't we last cast? I know I know all that. Did you tell me in conversation, or did you tell me? I have no idea oh, when the hell I told you this. But it, it was a surprise. It was a surprise that I was going to come in. So my dad is talking to Gail. I walk in the deli. Hey, Sebastian. So now we're eating the sandwich and we're sitting down with Gail King. Right now, my father obviously not used to press, not used to cameras. I mean, he's see, he's seen him throughout my twenty five year career here and there, but never like sitting down with Gail King for Christ's sake. Right. Right, right. So, uh, so we're doing an interview, and I could tell, you know, my father's nervous. I could tell, like, in the way he's behaving, the way he's moving. I could tell, I, I don't know, his, his fingers were over, his fingers were like this. I've never seen his fingers like this. It, I, I don't know what the hell that was, but I'm like, oh, man, this must be like a nervous thing he's got, <laughs> he's got going. Right, right. And I could tell the way he's talking. <laughs> It's it's not. I mean, my father's an immigrant. He came here when he was fifteen years old, so his English is his second language. But like, even more now, I'm I'm seeing the immigrant come out of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Like he, was, he thinks that's what they want. <laughs> It'll be like a seal coming out, bouncing the ball, and they're like, "Not yet with the ball. Not yet with the ball, right?" <laughs> <laughs> like he was talking. To Gail King, like he was probably talking to people when he first arrived here. You know, like <laughs> my <Yeah>. name is. <laughs> oh shit! Like I gotta watch he went the back laughter, Sixty yeah. years. I'm trying, I gotta re repress my laughter. I don't want to pop something uh, under my situation. Oh, well, <laughs> well, but I'm, I'm, that's so funny to me. Your father's coming off to talking to Gail King like he's going. <laughs> Where do I uh, shine in? I shine into America. Where do I go? 
Yeah. He, he literally uh, lost what 60. Do I Go ahead. <laughs> he lost 65 uh, years of English. Right. In one interview. Gone. So <laughs> So we're talking to Gail and now we're going to move. We're going to do the second part of the interview interview with De Niro at a hair salon in the city. All right. In New York so, City now or Chicago? Chicago. All right. Oh, all right. All right. So we go to the salon. It's going to be Gail King, and then in three chairs is going to be um, De Niro. I'm in the middle, my dad on the right. All right. So we sit down at the salon. We're doing the interview. All right. She's asking me questions. Da, 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 da. Now, in the back of Gail King, there's a mirror. Right? In that mirror, I see me, De Niro, and my dad. Right? And I see obviously the Gail King's back of her head. She asked me a question. In the middle of the question, I forget what question it is, I start bawling. I'm I'm crying on Gail King, bro. <laughs> All right. Man. Oh shit. <laughs> even Gail King was probably like I, I don't even want this <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even helping my interview no it was a, it was obviously about dad alright but anyway go ahead it, 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 for whatever the reason you know sometimes in life whatever whatever you're doing you don't even think about what's going on. You're just like, all right, I got an interview. Okay, we got the deli and then the thing, and then I'm gonna go back to the hotel, shower, and the whatever, whatever it it was. It it all kind of like hit me at once that this was even happening. You know, you 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 say about the the premiere and the, you couldn't even have dreamed and da, 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 da. yeah. This yeah. is the moment. This is the moment. As I'm sitting there looking at De Niro and my father in the mirror, I'm I'm actually realizing De Niro is playing my father in a movie. Mm, We're getting right. interviewed by Gail King and we're in my hometown of Chicago. All this is running through my head. In my hometown of Chicago, I looked out the window and I remember my buddies and I going to nightclubs in the city and like who you know like you fast forward now whatever 27 years and I'm and I'm and I'm doing all this so I'm crying. Now Gail King's her her interview Technique kicks in, right? <laughs> she, she know she knows she has a moment here with me crying. Right. So she goes, Sebastian, tell me, what are you feeling right now? That's making you feel these emotions, right, bro? I felt like this was the opposite of the R. Kelly interview, right? Where where R. Kelly got up and he was screaming. Right, did you? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. He did an interview with Gail King, and and he went off on her or something. Bro, where where do you even get? Do you even get TV uh, where R you're Kelly, at? Kelly, yeah, I get TV, but all <laughs> Kelly don't. He's not. You know, whatever. He's in jail now, anyway, right? I never. <laughs> he's the guy. I never listened to his music. I know he touched kids and went to jail, but I didn't know he had a breakdown on Gail King. By the way, where's Kanye? I was thinking about that the other day. He fall in a hole and just like, I mean, gone. <laughs> Wiped out. Like he was on Epstein Island. <laughs> <laughs> and new shit, you know? I, I, I don't know what he's doing, but right. I don't know if he's he's completely canceled. Or you never know. With this guy, he might be coming out with some new full-blown you know clothing line or a movie i don't know you, you, you can't right. I, this this guy you never know what he's doing exactly uh, or exactly or like you or like you said maybe 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 hollywood may put him in the uh in uh in cancel prison who knows yeah yeah maybe he's having breakfast with paula dean down south somewhere <laughs> no, huh I was watching Food Network with Jackie the other night, and I go, remember that lady who said some racist shit? I haven't seen her since. And Jackie's like, nah, she's gone. Never seen gone. her again. Gone. So 
Oprah obviously saw this interview. This is how well this was going. Gail King leans in and asks you this, and what is your response to why I'm feeling? Uh, oh, I, basically, what way. I just told you. You know, I, 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 it's yeah. all hitting me right now. It, it, the, the the magnitude of this whole thing is is um yeah. So I I, I tell her right, and then I look. My dad's crying, and De Niro's got a slight mist coming off his <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> Shit, that is, and you're wow, man. Now you gotta, you gotta wonder. Is De Niro going? I could probably add another twenty five, uh, uh, two hundred grand to the opening weekend box office if I can pull out a little <laughs> cry here with the father and son. You know, because you, when I watched the movie, I remember you saying how like the whole great ending, how you had to do it twice with the crying, mm-hmm. and De Niro can cry. Boom! I saw it. He just goes right into like if you're married to De Niro and he starts crying and says I love you so much I, I'd be like I I have no idea if any of this shit is real none <laughs> right that's how good you are so you know but what did Gail, Gail King must have been like this is golden right she's got three grown men crying in downtown <laughs> Chicago on a fucking weekday <laughs> I mean shit one of the manliest cities in the country you guys are Balling it out. Ball, balling. All right, guys, I want to talk about Masterclass. I don't know if you've heard about Masterclass, but this is this thing where you can go online and there are professionals in various different fields of entertainment and arts, and they give you a lesson on what they've learned through the years. They give you their t- tricks and techniques. Last week I did it. I went online. I got back to the hotel room. Instead of watching TV, I took a lesson with Steve Martin on stand-up comedy. The the guy started out at amusement parks doing magic tricks at like Disney or something. Made it to, well, we all know what he made it to, but the point is you're sitting in a hotel room wondering about yourself. Then you have Steve Martin one-on-one on on your computer because you can watch it on video, you can listen, telling you, I started out at amusement parks. It just gives you the inspiration you need. And anyone can get this. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. If you don't get through the whole class, it's like, can you imagine being in class in college and be able to hit pause, go get a cup of coffee, come back, and then having the teacher start talking again? Well, with this, you can, but the teacher is a famous, famous, it, just like the best of the best. Annual memberships for this thing only start at $10 a month. I mean, people like Judd Apatow are telling you how to do stuff. Uh, Sam Jackson's telling you how to do uh, acting. Uh, the best. And you get unlimited access to every instructor. Thousands of online lessons, thousands, uh, exclusive content, insights, and so much more. It's like a artist university in your own living room for ten dollars a month. There are over 180 classes to pick from, everything from Gordon Ramsay to Mariah Carey, with new classes added every month. Oh man, this thing! You guys got to check this out. I was overwhelmed when I first did it, but like I said, I watched the Steve Martin one, and it was phenomenal. And again, you can drive. On your morning commute, you could be on a train, you could watch it on your on your phone, you could watch it in so many different places, you could just listen, you could sit in your backyard with a cold beer and get dancing tips from, I don't know, I don't even know, I'm just guessing there's somebody on this thing that teaches dancing. Find practical takeaways that you can apply to your life and at work. If you run a business, you can use Masterclass to help your team. How about that? Maybe getting a little tip from Gordon Ramsay who ran kitchens that you can apply on how to run your business. Gain new skills in as little as 10 minutes, either on your phone, computer, tablet, smart TV, and even audio mode to listen on the go. All those things I already told you. How do I consume? Like I said, I poured, I poured a glass of red wine and listen to Steve Martin in my hotel room. My next one I want to listen to is Sam Jackson. I got a road trip. I'm going to pop that one on when I get on... <clears throat> I'm taking Amtrak. Do you believe it? I'm admitting it. I'm taking Amtrak, and I'm going to listen to Sam Jackson on acting. Guy's been in more movies than I've been to parties. How much would it cost to take one of these classes from one of the world's best? Well, with Masterclass annual membership, it would only cost you $10 a month. Can you imagine if Sam Jackson was going to teach an acting class? Just, yeah, I'm going to teach one class. Probably cost you... $1,500 $1,500 just for one class. Well, now you're getting him and all these others for $10 a month. Get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a Pete and Sebastian listener, you can get 15% off 
when you go to masterclass.com slash the cast. That's masterclass.com slash the cast for 15% off your annual membership. Masterclass.com slash the cast. Start learning from the best. What are you waiting for? This thing's unbelievable. So we ball and then uh, we go through this interview thing. Now, now in the interview, one of the interviews, the person interviewing us goes to De Niro, wow, you got six kids, right? And De Niro goes, no, I got seven. I just had a baby, right? Now I've been with this guy for two days, right? Don't mention shit about no baby, no nothing. You would think that would be on the, you know, the topic of conversation when I leaned over and go, "What's going on?" <laughs> you think wait a second. Wait a second. I could see him not telling you his his lover was pregnant leading up to it, but he just had a baby, and that whole time hanging out, he didn't tell you I had a kid two days ago. No, no, no. no. I mean, how you been? What's going on? <laughs> nah, nothing. Just hanging out. It, I, like it, if you're eighty <laughs> and you have a <laughs> and you have a newborn, <laughs> you lead with that. No, <laughs> I would think, man. Holy shit! Oh god, that's like I had dinner once with a guy, and and my and Jackie goes, "Do you have any kids?" And he goes, "No, no." And then I go. His name is Jimmy. I go, Jimmy. He goes, oh, God, what am I saying? I got one, a daughter. Yeah, and, like, they live together. You know, like, a, a happy wife and family. He was just, like, flaking out for a sec. But this, to, like, literally give birth. I wonder why, like, if it's, like, a personal thing or, you know. No, I, I don't, I don't know. think, yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if he wanted people to know and that slipped out. I don't, I don't know what happened. But I found out when everybody else found out that this guy's got a newborn, right? Right, right. So, uh. So yeah, he he's got he's got, a, and I thought I was old having kids at my age, right? I thought I got I got three year old. I'm fifty. He's eighty. He's got a newborn, right? Now, but this begs so, the question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Well, and no, this no, no, is nothing to Denaro. This is anyone famous, like you know, uh, uh, who the uh, Mick Jag has done a lot. of These guys have done it, but like it begs the question. I love my dad. You love your dad. But if you had a dad who was like 80 when he had you, what would you rather have? The fathers we had or no dad bought 25 million when I turn 18? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> oh. that, that, that's how I think those guys sleep at night. They're like, yeah, I'm probably not going to be around to see you grow up. But when you hit 18, kaboom, go get yourself a nice house in the Hamptons. Yeah, you know, it could be that. It could be that. Or they might be thinking, in De Niro's case, he might be thinking, yeah, okay, I I, I, I probably won't be around for, for you know, majority of the kid's life. But he's probably thinking, I got such a catalog of movies that they could just watch the movies and go, oh, he... That's what he probably would have said. Oh, if I, yeah. If I got a detention. Like, he's got so many characters and so many personalities in these movies. It could definitely right. suit a kid if he watched Goodfellas in going, oh, okay. Right. My dad would have probably has a little bit of that in him. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And then he watch Cape Fear and go, oh, yeah, no, he he's probably might get a little psychotic if things go yeah. sideways. And then watch Awakenings, and that's a lot of your dad <laughs> not talking for life. <laughs> that's that's probably more your dad uh, off screen than any other movie is Awakenings, right? <laughs> He's a very shy man. If you want to get De Niro talking, you got to lean over and whisper in his ear, Trump. Well, I'll tell you, man, the way you're putting it, you and I could have kids when we're 82 years old and just listen to the cast, and it's like I raised you. you know? Yeah. Bro. We're raising I, kids now. I, I know. That's, uh, that, that, that's, that should be kind of what our whole objective is. If your mother or father or both of them die in a plane crash and you're in an right. orphanage, right? Right. Yeah. You, you put on the Pete and Sebastian show from episode one, and you're going to be fine. 
probably better than the guidance you would have got from your parents if they parachuted <laughs> out of the fucking plane, right? And not only that, we should probably get dolls made of ourselves that you can hug while you listen to us. <laughs> then it's as if you're literally being raised with us in the fucking house. You know what I'm saying? Just a little Sebastian doll that pats your shoulder and says, <laughs> you know, get over it or don't, you know, don't forget to tip or whatever. So many pieces of advice. Um, this is fascinating. It was one other thing I wanted to say about the having a kid at an old age pa- aspect of it too. Um, uh, I can't remember. Oh, I've talked about this. I got one kid. And at 40, I got a vasectomy because I knew I left my stamp and I don't need to leave my stamp no more. And I will swear and go so far as to say the end of making love, to put it classly, got more pleasurable after the vasectomy. I don't even know why. It does. It feels better. It's crazy. Um, so why? These guys must want to leave their seed. You know what I'm saying? The more De Niro is floating around when I kick the bucket, the better, right? You know, that's how they feel. They love it. You know how many Jaggers are out there these days? How about Baldwin? Baldwin just started a whole new family at 55. He just said, I'm going to pretend I'm 25 and just do it all again. Right? So, yeah, man. I only need to leave one Corielli floating around. And you know what's terrible? And you got the same problem with, with Serafina, man, is like one of the best things about them, they got to shed when they get married, our name, right? To like, I just can't see how my daughter can look a man in the eye and say, yeah, I'll not be a Corielli anymore. I'll be a fucking Smith. Well, it's, or an it's, O'Donnell. The, 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 name, the name dies with you. Yeah. Uh, well... No, doesn't no, your brother does. have a son? It does, but that's a side thing now. It's there's a lot of Irish and mixed in their family. It's like, yeah, it kind of does die with me. But you know, can it get like, what if maybe if Sadie marries, divorces, and has a kid, and the kid's a boy, and then that kid's raised Corielli because she's like, you don't want your ex, your father's last name. He was oh, a yeah. scum. <laughs> yeah, but then that means Sadie had a bad marriage. I don't need that. I'd rather just have the name die. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got Caruso who's going to carry that puppy on nice. Oh, yeah. yeah so, anyway. um. <laughs> if you're like me, you love spring, but you may not love figuring out how to take care of your yard. I've been living where I live for 10 years. I finally think I, I'm, I'm getting it down. I'm starting to get a feel for my own lawn. But does anyone else just stand there in the store wondering where to start? I'm constantly, I don't know what product to use. That's where Sunday Lawn Care comes in. These guys are great. I'm not kidding you. Sunday is everything you need to get the lawn you dreamed of. This spring, go to sunday.com slash the cast and enter your address to get a customized plan created just for your lawn. I mean, just for your lawn. Not every lawn's the same. They're going to hook you up. No trips to the store or hauling heavy bags since they ship straight to your home. You just need a hose to apply Sunday. That's it. You can fertilize your whole lawn and less time than it takes to watch your episode of your favorite TV show. We've talked about that before. What are we talking? One hour and you fertilize your whole lawn. Do you know about this place, Sebastian? You got to use it on your new backyard. Well, I'm getting Marathon Lawn uh, installed right now. And uh, it, you know, it, it's all about lawn and the servicing of your lawn. You don't want to be that that house that's got brown patches and go, what the hell are they doing over there? Wow. And, yeah. and this place, uh, they, they only they only use ingredients you can feel good about. And there's no there's no chemicals. There's no long waiting periods. Trying to keep your kids and pets off the lawn. Simply apply it, let it dry, and you're back to enjoying your yard. You know, I remember growing up, my dad was like, "Don't go on the lawn. I just fertilized it, right?" <laughs> and then we have to we'd have to go play football in the street. Not here. Sunday is easy. It's affordable. Some lawn care services cost more than fifteen hundred a year, but Sunday's full season plans they start at one hundred nine bucks. And for a limited time, wow. Sunday is offering our listeners fifty percent off your first box. So you can get started today for as little as fifty five bucks when you go to getsunday.com slash the cast at checkout. That's fifty percent off your first box at getsunday.com slash the cast. <laughs> All right, so 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 that's just a little flavor, a little hint of of kind of what went down. I mean, 
I, my friends came to the Chicago screening. Uh, must have been amazing. All your high school buddies, they must have been like, bro, this is crazy, bro. Awesome. College, yeah, college and high school came to to the Chicago thing. And here's something I want to get into, and I think I might have might have talked to you about this either there or <laughs> 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 So, to give people an, an idea of, of what happens during the promotion of a movie, since the traditional ways of promoting a movie are no longer relevant. For example, uh, a studio like Sony might have bought spots on uh, Seinfeld when Seinfeld was on NBC to promote their upcoming movie on network TV, right? That's where we yeah. all saw the trailers back then in the 80s and the 90s. Well, since nobody's watching network television anymore, a lot of ad dollars are not uh, funneled towards network TV. Billboards are not as big as they used to be because everybody's basically on a device, phone, a computer, what have you. So now what these movie studios are doing is they're inviting and hiring these quote-unquote influencers to come to the movie and yeah. then have them post on their social media to their followers that, oh, about my father is good, you should go see it, this, that, and the other. All right. So I'm at the... I'm at the I'm at the red carpet, and then subsequently the the after party, which you were at, right? And I'm getting people coming up to me, right? And they're like, "Oh, uh, Sebastian, I'd like you to meet the uh, uh, Nona Rosanna." I go, "What? <laughs> no, Nona Rosanna." And then Nona Rosanna goes, "Hey, I got it." I got a two million tiki tack. <laughs> I got two million tiki tacks. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So she, she's an influencer, right? This is. Yeah, I go, I go. Well, what do you do? And then, and then their grandson is there, and he's like. Oh, no, she, you know, we, uh, she makes uh, meatballs, and we record it. Like, I record it, and my brother edits it, and, 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 uh, and she, and I, and I go, so she cooks? <laughs> and now she's at the premiere with De Niro? <laughs> <laughs> she's the new Mario Lopez. Right? <laughs> What what happened to entertainment tonight? You know what I'm saying? Da -na -na, da -na -na. Oh, no, I'm doing sports set. <laughs> so, so what's happening now, right? Yeah, yeah. Is these influencers are kind of meshed now with, like, I'm sitting there going, I'm thinking this up. It took me 49 years. <laughs> Right? To take a picture with De Niro, right? Now, a twenty one year old kid who who, you know, makes uh, makes pizzas in his basement is all of a sudden at the premiere and he's he's gonna determine whether or not the movie does well or not. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's absolutely crazy. And I saw an article recently that said young kids, the number one thing we used to want to be up until like 10 years ago were movie stars uh, and maybe professional athletes. Now the number one thing kids want to be are influencers. Like movie stars Fine. need the influencers. Man, Fine. these kids got to be wondering I... what are they going to do when Nana kicks it, man? What's our <laughs> second act going to be? You know, who's going to make the well, meatballs next? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I actually did a, a, a bit about, like, stop using your fucking grandparents 
for financial gain, right? <laughs> this poor woman, 88 <laughs> years old, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 88 years old, right? She gets up, and the grandkids in the morning are going, okay, Nona, come on. Get get the pasta going. And she's probably going, ah, I, gotta, I, I gotta get to the bike. <laughs> That poor one. This is like child labor laws, the reverse, right? Like, <laughs> right. After seventy, leave your fucking no no alone. What is this? Uh, was that her? <laughs> child labor laws, <laughs> the reverse. Bro, right. and you you used to have that great bit about your mom <laughs> belt, your grandmother belting out lasagnas in the basement. All, All right, you had to Patrick, do was go the, down there with your. Off the, I didn't yeah. see Pete here. This guy's throwing up no. This guy's out of nowhere. Yeah. No, no photos. We're in a full blown yeah. bit, and I'm getting no, no photos. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who the fuck that is. <laughs> it's, it's no the, cue, it, no it, nothing. He it, 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 it thinks it's the lady. <laughs> but I'm saying your grandmother. I don't want any. Them, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want any fucking photos of nobody because these people are real and they're promoting the movie. <laughs> So this poor lady, and oh, it, I don't know. I, yeah. There was four nonas there. There was, there was, there was, a, there was another. There was a. You and I wanted to take a photo, right? Together, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And I had some people like all over me. I don't know. They wanted. They wanted a photo, and then I turned around, right? And I, <laughs> and I said, "Get the fuck out oh. of here!" Right? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is for a photo, very politely. You go, yeah, one minute. You go, just yeah. and you go, yeah, one minute. The fuck out of here! I couldn't breathe. I started laughing so hard, man. <laughs> they, they were hounding me all night, though, right, right. for the photo. Yeah. So that was you, you, what you saw was kind of like right. the, I, I reached a tipping point. Plus, I did, I did that for. Because I knew you For would me, laugh. To make me laugh, I was dying, man. I was dying. I feel like all those times I see Dean and Sinatra arm and arm with Sammy. That you know, and you're like, oh, I wonder what they're whispering. They're probably whispering, you know, these fucking people. Give us five minutes, you know. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't take a step everywhere you went. It was like, but again, I mean, you know, everyone was there for you. But um, yeah. I ran into at least three or four people that basically said they're there because they impersonate you. So I, yeah. I always find yeah. that, like, I find the impersonation flattering for a minute. Wow, you nailed me. Now, never do it again, gay. <laughs> Shut it down. My job. That was good, though. Nice job, you know? I mean, I, I, and I, you know, some of these people, very nice guys, too, but it's like, you know. Even when I failed in a, uh, an imitation at home, like, oh, I, try, I used to try to do uh, Danier, uh, Dangerfield. I used, to, I used to be able to do them pretty good. And when I nailed it, I just go, hey, I got it. I go, Dad, look, De Niro. I didn't, I didn't call up the comedy seller. Can I get another five minutes? I'm doing Dangerfield now. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. That's not nice to say. But it's like I, I don't want comedians to get It's a bad habit. They get into the habit of imitating other comedians. And people find it humorous, and you know you gotta. It's all right to dip a toe for a second, but you got to do your own thing. That's how I feel. Like Dice, <laughs> the end of his special, when he did all all those guys together, Travolta, Eric Robin. He did one thing, hilarious. Yeah. Never seen yeah. it again. So that's my <laughs> opinion. But anyway, it's for the comics out there. It's for the comics out there. Yeah, so there's a lot of impressions yeah, no, of you. A lot of By impersonators. The way, nobody does you as good as your, your sister. I mean. If you weren't older than her, I would think you stole her <laughs> persona. I mean, she is such a blast. She is so fun. Me and Jackie can't stop saying how much fun we have with your mom and your sister specifically. Oh, God thank damn, you. she makes the, me laugh. So yeah, I, the, the the feelings are mutual on her end as well with you and uh, and Jackie. She had a she had an absolute great time hanging out with you and your wife. Um, so that all being said. And I know I'm missing stuff. I'm just giving you broad strokes because I, I want to get yeah. into this, and I think it deserves some airtime here. You sent a picture uh, of you, and I got I got to tell you, I didn't I didn't tell you this that night, but I got to tell you, when I first saw you on the red yeah. carpet, 
I thought you were melting. And something was off. You looked off. There's a there's a photo of us, and you you look like you were sick. Really? Yeah. Do I look sick now? No. Honestly, honestly. Because I'm not, but I don't think. Uh, I, I know, but you you look like you were going through it. Put put the photo up. Put the photo up. I, I mean, you, you just you just looked. I didn't look sick. <laughs> no, yeah, it's I, not I, the Pete. I'm 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 used to seeing. I'm not saying I'm not saying you look bad. I'm just saying you look like you were because you, after you told me what you were going through, I felt like oh okay, I put the two and two together. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, but like, it was weird because that suit, you know, was like custom, not custom made, but somebody went out of their way for me, and I loved the suit, and I was excited and stuff. I put it on, and and all the clothes, even the casual clothes that day, hanging out, I, I didn't, I wasn't feeling. I was looking good. Like, how come I'm not looking as cool as I? Look at that. That's <laughs> like off. Everything about it is off. <laughs> right. I mean, I look like uh, it looks like my head was superimposed onto somebody else's <laughs> body, doesn't it? It, 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 it looks really like, does. It, and they did a bad job doing it. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, it, yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't. I agree. I feel like you know, I'm still in Fredonia. People are like, look, dude, it, it's like not even photoshopped on right. It's like a South Park fucking uh, episode. <laughs> the head should be a little over. Yeah, yeah it should know, be to the I right. If I feel like. I feel like the head was placed on your left shoulder, or uh, well, I'm, I'm maybe looking at it backwards, but yeah, on your left right. shoulder. I feel like they they offset the head too far that way, and do you see? There's a gap in between your collar and your neck. Right. There's like a yeah, right, yeah, right there. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. your neck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like All you that. shouldn't be able to read your collar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you almost know? like I, it's almost like I did an Egyptian dance with my head towards you, towards your head to get. I don't know. I was not comfortable on the red carpet, and you you uh, look like you just noticed I was sick, and you can't wait to get out of this fucking hug. Right? I mean, you look like you'd rather be talking to the grandma who makes the fucking meatballs than than me right there. <laughs> so. This was a that learning was a curve of, for everybody. <laughs> that, was a look, that was a look of concern uh, yeah. from me when I well, when I saw you. Hey, let's take a photo, and then they snapped it. And I was like, God, I hope he goes to the hospital. You know, like. <laughs> 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 well, then, Patrick, slap up the photo I just sent you because this was me. Uh, I'd say about ten hours, maybe wait, twelve hours after that photo is this photo. Okay, we're, timing would be so we're gonna, perfect right here. <laughs> oh, is it too soon? Is he's got the Nono to... photo though. He's got he's got the Nono photo oh, yeah. ready. If you want to put that, yeah. Up. Oh, yeah, read thing on the Nono photo. But the one of me, I just want to flash for a sec. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. What the... Okay, right. can, can oh, we get the uh, Nono photo out we, of there? Uh, yeah, guy. Just... What are you doing with the Nono thing, bro? <laughs> Holy... Just a clear shot of Pete. There, there, there we go. There we go. Wow. Okay, so this is you. By this the way, is yeah. you. Ten hours after, I thought you were dying. Where, which, yeah. I mean, come on, bro. This goes kind of hand in hand. You, I feel like I'm. All, I feel like uh, I yeah. could. I could. I almost predict illness. Like if I saw someone going, there's something wrong with this guy. And next thing you know, right. they're in the hospital or they got some severe illness. I feel like I, I yeah. got a good sense on that. So tell us, what the hell happened to you? Uh, by the way, this is the hospital by me, and we can cut away from it now, but you would think I was in the emergency room in Haiti. Did you see that? Holy shit. I got to move closer to a major city, bro. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> the only good news is there was nobody there but me. Uh, all right. Yeah, you're like one of them dogs that can just sniff the person <laughs> and do a special bark that tells the owner cancer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, get, uh, do we go straight to what it was? All right, here's it was. Uh, all right, let me walk you through. To take us through, take us through. So, 
uh, leading up to your sh- premiere, about I'd say maybe three, four days prior to that, I was having occasional pains in my in my stomach, lower left side mostly, but like achy, almost like if someone hit you in the stomach, and then that lingering effect, or also like when you're hungry. Uh, but they'd come and go. I was like, ah, you know, with me, sometimes I'm not drinking enough liquids. Uh, I, sometimes I'm snacking on the wrong shit or Jackie will yell at me because I can go till three in the afternoon and I haven't even eaten anything yet, right? So, like, it's not uncommon to have once in a while have a stomach ache, right? Uh, and then, like, the day of premiere, I even remember hanging out, walking around the city with Jackie, and she's like, how's your stomach? I'm like, no, it's good. I don't feel it at all. Nothing. Great time at the premiere. No problem. Now, at the premiere, I had popcorn. So I only bring that up because then what happened was I only had like three beers. That's it. Didn't even get loaded at the premiere or anything. So I couldn't sleep. And my stomach now is killing me in the hotel room. All night long, I'm tossing and turning. I can't get any sleep. Uh, and then we wake up in the morning. We have an 11 o'clock flight. So it's not like we had to get up at the crack of dawn. But we wake up in the hotel I'm like, yeah, let's just get home. I can't, I couldn't sleep. My stomach is killing me. Uh, then I go in the bathroom and I throw up. And it was just water because anything I'd eaten the night before, which wasn't much anyway, was all digested, right? So I'm like, oh man, I'm throwing up. And again, I'm thinking maybe I'm just sick, but never before has my stomach hurt this bad. So I'm freaking dying and we get into the Uber and we go to the airport. And I, I mean, I literally can't even talk to Jackie at all. We get on. We we're waiting at LaGuardia, and I can't, I gotta I gotta throw up again. Plus, it's coming out the other end. So now I'm in LaGuardia, bro, and I I gotta throw up, and I'm in the bathroom, and you know bathroom stalls they're packed, and I throw up loud. So now I'm leaning over. Oh wow! I'm wait. trying to. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, bro, bro. I'm trying to time my throw up on like you ever see Shawshank. When he's trying to hit the pipe, whenever the thunder comes, like he'll see the lightning and he's just boom. I'm trying to throw up on people's flushes. I'll hear a flush. <laughs> as soon as the flush is over, and then I gotta throw up again. I'll hit flush on mine. You hear that flush? And and you and you kind of and you kind of know everyone knows what you're doing. I'm like, I just I just don't need some fucking asshole going. You all right over there? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then I gotta do, and then I gotta do the turnaround and go number two, and then I gotta Ooh. puke again. So, bro, at one point, at one point, I'm standing up with my pants down to my ankles. I'm in the handicap bathroom, by the way. Give myself some room. Uh, leaning against the stall, having you know, after you throw up and you and you start to sweat right after a throw up, and it actually feels nice. It's like a relief. So I'm doing that <sighs> with my pants down to my ankles. Not even knowing which end it's going to come out of next. And like, I'm going, you know, I, I, my doctor told me I'm prone to, after I had had a colonoscopy, to diverticulitis. He's like, don't eat a lot of nuts because you could get a nut stuck in there and it could be infected. Don't eat like popcorn. But I do anyway. So I'm like, it's probably the popcorn probably caught me, right? So anyway, I'm dying. So I come out, and Jackie's like, how you doing? I get on the plane. The whole flight home, I got the puke bag, and I'm in the window seat. Jackie's here, and I'm doing it. Didn't puke oh. once, but a couple of times I'm spitting in it. We land in Buffalo. I sit in the back of the car. She drives us home. I call my doctor, uh, and they say, oh, well, he'll call you back later today. The nurse will call you back. So I go to lay on the couch. It's like maybe 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock now in the afternoon, and I'm like just so dying. I turn to Jackie. I go, I'm, I'm going to the emergency room. I, I don't know that I, I don't know if I've ever gone to the emergency room. Well, 18 years old for stitches. But anyway, I go to the emergency room. I check in. There's like nobody there, which is nice. They get me in pretty quick. I'm like, guy, my stomach, I can't eat. I've been throwing up. I got nothing in me. I can't even drink anything. It keeps coming out. And, I, and of all that, I can handle. But my stomach, I can't, I can't take it. So they right away bring me down to a, a room. They lay me in a bed. And, the, and the, right away, they hooked me up with an IV. Then that I'm like, my stomach is so bad. They give me a morphine drip, right? And then I'm chilly. So they go, would you like a towel? I'm like, yeah. They give me a towel. But the towels they give, I'm doing this at home. 
It was heated. It was like in, they keep them in an oven. So when they lay it on you, it's hot, like out of an oven. And within like 10 minutes, I, I could have cried. I'm like, I feel fucking great. I feel so good because I had nothing in me. That's, that's the photo you see. I'm so happy right now, you know? So the doc comes in and he's like, we're going to run some blood tests and this and that, right? Um, so they run some blood tests while they're gone. I mean, I just got a curtain around me. I hear someone next to me. There's a few other rooms. There's a lot going on. I don't care about any of it, bro. I took my wallet out, my phone, put it to my side, and I just slept. I was in paradise. I mean, I got insurance, but even if I didn't, I don't care if this shit cost five grand at that moment. I was just so happy, right? So uh, take some blood tests. Then they got to, like, check um, a CAT scan of my stomach, I guess, an MRI of my stomach. So they have to have, you ever do this? You have to drink a dye? Uh, no, they inject the dye in me. They inject the dye in my, in my body. And that dye contrasts what they need to see. But they're like, your whole body's going to get hot. You're going to feel like you're on fire. Your fingers might tingle. It doesn't hurt. It just heats up. And then it dissipates right away. And they give it to me. And it's the weirdest feeling. You feel this shit going through your body like a die and, and now they're like all right we got to get you down before the die is out of your body you know so they bring you down they put you in the cat scan they check my stomach i go back i lay down again with my morphine drip for another hour and, until the tests are done and doc comes in <clears throat> and he's like you have gastroticulitis gastro which basically means you had a massive infection inside your stomach it's like having the flu, but inside your stomach. And you usually get it. I think the only way you can get it actually is like by being in contact with a, a surface that had fecal matter. Like if somebody didn't wipe their hands after they went to the bathroom and maybe touched a, 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 a doorknob or something that I touched. Oh, right? this is people are walking around now wiping their fucking. I said to Jackie, who's walking around rubbing shit on shit? You know, I mean, like I was in LaGuardia accidentally, right? <laughs> but so, and then he's like, you know, you all, how long has it been lasting? And I said, just like a week. And he's like, yeah, it's a, probably acute, you know, because it's not a chronic thing. He goes, but your stomach lining is a little thick. And I think that's because it's so irritated. But maybe you should down the line have them give you the endoscope with the camera down your throat. So now I go home. He's got some medic. I'm literally out of there in like four hours, but it was paradise. Now my stomach didn't hurt anymore. I was, I was hydrated. I had some medicines. Uh, and I go home. Uh, I go home and uh, I, my doctor's like, I got to do a follow up. So my doctor wants to see me the next day. So the next morning, I was on the phone with you. Remember, we were talking. I'm in my driveway. Uh, we had a few laughs, you and I. I get off the phone with you, and I'm, I go to sit down in my backyard with my coffee. And at one point, I go to get up. I fucking throw out my back. I'm, I, 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 can, I can barely move, right? And it's like Thursday. It's about to be a beautiful weekend, Mother's Day weekend. My stomach is still on and off. I, 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 I'm like, I, I don't know. This is Friday. This is Friday because we, we were supposed to cast on Saturday. I was so upset, bro. Um and I barely make it to the doctor, I'm, I'm dying. And I'm telling my doctor, I'm here for the follow-up on my stomach, but I threw out my back again, and the nurse is going, he threw out his back again. Like, like everybody knows it, like that I do this, that this happens to me. And it's like, it, I, at this point, bro, I'm tired of, it's been four fucking years, and you people act like I'm Norm walking into Cheers. Norm's here, no, it's not fucking funny. Get your shit together, all right? You're all going to enjoy your weekend, and I'm going to be pissing in a fucking cup again, you know? So, <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, dude, these doctors. So, so there I am, right? And he goes, well, we got to deal with one thing at a time. Let's deal with the stomach first. As far as the back, have you been doing the stretches I told you to do? I, I, go, I can do them all. I can do them all as far as you want me to do them now, and I still throw out my back. And he's like, well, let me see, bend, bend over, bro. I just threw out my back. I can't bend over right now. What are you not fucking understanding? Right? I'm, I'm like, but I'm being nice, but bro. And I know I'm hogging the, 
the, the talking here, and I apologize, but I'm just trying to take you through it. So I'm yeah. so frustrated, right? I mean, he wants to, me to take my shirt off so he can check my stomach. When I take my shirt off, I rip off my back brace. And and he don't even go, oh, Jesus, you're wearing a back brace? Let's We should really figure out what we're going to do, right? So, so at one point, we get to talking about my back now after my stomach. And I'm like, I'm feeling better with my stomach. And he's like, all right, I just want you to switch you to this, um, like a, almost like a Tums, like a Nexium it's called. It's just an over-counter thing. I think that's going to just keep getting better. I think you just got a bad infection in your stomach. So see me next week about that. I don't think we need to do the NDO thing. I think you're going to be okay. And I do feel much better, bro. And I was very sick. So... As far as the back goes, he goes, I go, should I get an MRI? I mean, what are we doing? And he goes, well, we got the CAT scan, but I wasn't able to see it because you went to a local hospital and I told you to go to Jamestown because if you go to Jamestown, I can see it online. And I go, I went to Jamestown. And he goes, oh, I wasn't able to see it. I go, your physical therapist down the hall saw it that you sent me to. She saw it. So how is she seeing and you didn't see it? Well, maybe, maybe I did see. Let, let, let me. I'll go look again. And he comes back. And he goes, "All right, I did see it now. Um, you have very. I have arthritis in my back. All right, very bad, pretty bad. But here's my deal. Four fucking years ago, when you got me doing a hip replacement because I have arthritis in my hip, you you didn't think to look at my back." And see it. And see the arthritis. Four years ago, we could have did this. But instead, you got me doing goddamn stretches and, and, and physical therapy and telling you people suck. I, I don't want to throw them under the bus too bad, but I'm so pissed off, right? So uh, he goes, yeah, you have arthritis. Um, there's a shot you can take for that. Uh, he goes, you know, it's, not, well, well, to, it's, it's down. I have it right down at the bottom. And then I have it on a couple of my... Jo I don't know what you call them, joints when they come down your body and it gets irritated. And when it gets irritated, pff, it gets inflamed and I'm dying. So he's like, you drink a lot of beer? And I'm like, I really don't. I, I, I don't at all. So um, I'm like, no, nothing like that. Da, da, da. Okay. So what we're going to do next is I can't take blood tests yet because your stomach's still sick. So next week we'll do those blood tests. But in the meantime, um, you know, when you get better, you just stick to those stretches and, and blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> I go home, and it, this is the craziest thing. This is how it all comes out. That night, Sadie's coming back. She went to the beach with a girl, uh, one of her good friends and the mom. And the mom is dropping her back off. And I meet the mom on the driveway. And I'm like, oh, thanks for taking Sadie. And she reaches in for a hug. And I'm like, oh, I, I can't at my back. And Sadie goes, I'm trying to teach my dad, by the way the way your dad taught you, because I really love this part. Sadie goes to her, uh, oh, my dad has arthritis in his back, right? Which, you know, <laughs> what are you doing telling people that? So she goes, she's, uh, I want to say Brazilian, I can't, or Cuban, I'm not sure where she's from, real nicely. She goes, there's no such thing as arthritis. I go, why don't you go speak? There's no, no such thing as arthritis. It's all in what you're eating. It makes your body inflamed. This is what you need to take. And she gives me this recipe for a lemon and a tart, a, a tar, whatever, some a, a Indian spice and all this shit, right? Now, my sister can't have gluten and all this shit. So I get a hold of my sister and I'm, I start reading about it. And it's like, your body, we eat so much shit that causes inflammation, right? So much sugar. I eat so much sugar, candy, sweets, ice cream. I mean, bro... I'll, I'll walk through the kitchen and just bite the head off a fucking Easter bunny and then go back out and mow the lawn and not think <laughs> twice about it. I mean, I, nobody else does that? Like nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't do one starburst. I, I do four together. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm putting a, 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 a teaspoon and a half of sugar in a fucking espresso. There's almost as much sugar as there is espresso in my espresso, right? So like, just, you know, and then and that don't even count my ice cream every night with the cookies around the rim of the bowl. <laughs> and all and all I think is because I work out for an hour and I'm thin. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not fat. I'm not. And this guy, my doctor, he goes, I know this the back going out like that. It's 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 just degenerative. 
And it happens to so many guys your age. And here's the crazy thing about it, Pete. They're in shape just like you. And it could just be the simplest thing, bending down. And, and it go. I start reading about it. It's not degenerative. It's inflammatory from the shit we eat. And if I eat better, this won't happen. And you don't even sit there. You don't even ask me what I'm eating and why this is happening. It's like because they want you to take the drugs. That's what they want. It's fucking criminal. And the more I'm reading about it, the more my eyes are opening up. Like, why aren't these doctors being handcuffed and taken out the back? I can't wait to meet my AI doctor. I can't <laughs> wait to meet my AI doctor because I'm fucking done with the real ones, bro. I'm sorry, guys. We are out of time here. Um, and, and we're not going to change the episode. We're just going to run this episode right into Patreon. So if you want to hear the conclusion of this episode, go over to Patreon. Uh, Will you you hear the rest of this conversation? Um, we owe a Patreon this week. We're not doing this uh, so you guys sign up for Patreon. It's not our intention. It's just that you can't break up this this kind of flow back and forth. So Patreon is where I you're going to be able to hear the rest of this conversation. Um, and we hope you go over there. If not. No harm, no foul. Uh, it's just uh, you, you, you can't break up a perfect game. No, I, my mind can't go away from this anyway. We're on this. And this is I'm glad we're closing here because I also want to say I realize there's a lot of great doctors out there and I don't want anyone to think I'm, I'm, you know, crapping on the whole industry. There's great doctors that got a lot of heart and care. I'm just frustrated. We're getting a little frustrated with our inflammatory issues and uh, so, please, if you're driving in your car going, you have no idea what I know. You guys are the best. But yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's not Pete up. talking. It's it's the glu- it's the gluten. It's the gluten yeah. talking. Uh, <laughs> so- I'm stealing that. It's, I'm glutened so- up here, guy. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Next time I yell at someone. So yeah, so it's going to be switching over there. And like you said, man, it wasn't done purposely. It's just we're in the moment, and we got to keep this going. You guys. So we'll see you over on Patreon. Take care. <laughs>